there's been some discussion in the New Tech forums about how you might go about animating a train with several cars on a track that uh, curves around and keeping the, the carts uh, in line and uh, animating properly on the track. Uh, and there are several ways you can go about doing it. Some that come to mind uh, would be setting up an IK chain, um, also writing an expression that would offset each car from the, the main car. Uh, but the idea that I came up with uh, doesn't use IK, doesn't use expressions, is actually a, a fairly easy setup. And I thought I would share it with you. So uh, what I have here, I, I figured it, there was no need to uh, bother you with setting up these really basic objects as far as the modeling goes. But let's set them up. So I've got on layer one, I've got a track. And as you can see in the top window, we've got multiple segments. That's going to come in handy when we go to bend the object. If you don't have the segments, you won't be able to bend it properly. Okay. And in layer two, I've just got these really basic cars. Okay, it's the same car uh, copied over and over again. And to set this up, we're going to build a low res version of the cars and it's going to be so low res that it's a no-brainer. It's just a box. So I'm going to go into layer 3, put layer 2 in the background, zoom in on this first little car, create box, and I'm just going to create pretty much a bounding box that fits the shape of the car here. Okay, and so that's going to be our low res object that we're going to animate, and then we're going to transfer the data over to the high res car. So I'm going to go to one viewport and T for move, copy paste, copy paste, and I'm just making duplicates, copy paste, so that I can use this copy paste and move. Okay, so now I've got a box for each one of my cars. I'm going to set up a morph that we can take advantage of in layout and to do that I'm going to put layer 1 in the background and keep the boxes in the foreground and we're just going to move the boxes along the track so M for morph, new and I'm going to just call this move, create, close, T for move and I'm just going to move the cars down the track like so. Okay, so our morph goes from our base over here and I'm moving it down the track. So move back to the base, back to our windows, and now we have everything we need set up. We've got our, our car and our tracks, which we really need, and then this is just going to be a temp object for us to use. So we've got three layers uh, with three sets of, of objects. So uh, I can go ahead and, and save that. So file, save object. I already had train 001, so I'm going to make train 002. This is going to be the update that has the objects that we just built. Save. And we'll send that over to layout. Okay, let's go to the perspective window. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to move the light out of the way and just kind of move the camera. We'll use perspective view for the most part in this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I try and animate the cars is figure out what I want to do with my track. And I'm going to go ahead and use bones to deform the track into the shape that we want. So we'll go to the top view. And in this case, I'm just going to switch to bounding box mode. Move over to the setup tab and select the track object. Draw bones. And I'm just going to draw one big bone from one end to the other. Okay. With that bone selected still, I'm going to move over to bone split and by default it would split it into two bones. Let's go with a higher number. Um, let's just do 24. I'm just trying to get a, a few more bones in there so that we can deform the track. It, it's not really necessarily um, required that you use 24. You can use as many as you'd like to get the shape that you want. And what it does is it splits that one bone into multiple bones. Uh, when you create a bone, it's not active, so we need to activate all the bones. So I'm going to come over here to Bones On, and now they're active. And now what I'm going to do is middle, uh, I'm going to middle mouse select almost all of the bones, Y for rotate, and I'm going to bend the track a little bit this way, and then I'm going to bend the track a little bit this way. Now, this is... <laughs> 
more of a curve than you would see on a train track. It, it curves over a greater distance, but if it works for this, it'll work for a uh, less of a curve. Plus, if you're doing a roller coaster, well, you might need more of a curve. So we'll go ahead and use these kind of curves to work with. I'm going to go back to texture shaded, and I'm going to go back to perspective view, and this way we can see that our our track is curved using the bones. Okay. Now I want the the box cars to follow that, so I'm going to move over to my temp object, which is the, just these boxes here. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. And I want them to follow the track. Well, I'm going to need them to follow the bones, but I don't have bones placed in that. But that's okay because if I come down here and choose bones, go to properties. I can use bones from object and I'm going to use bones from the tracks and we can see that it already starts to deform the object okay and I want it to travel along this track so I'm going to take advantage of that morph that we built so come over to objects properties the deform tab and under add displacement let's choose morph mixer it says that I have one endomorph that's the one that we built double click and I'll have this open, move this over here, and I'll go ahead and close the object properties for right now. So on frame zero, we'll start here, come all the way over to frame 60, and I'm going to just morph it down the track. It already happened, but let's go ahead and close this. And as we scrub through, we can see that the cars are following the track. Now, why didn't I just do why did I need these temp objects? Why don't I just do that to this car? Well, one thing, let's see if, if we can see it in the top view. One thing that's happening, yeah, here we go, is that when it hits this curve, it starts to deform the object because the bones are deforming the object to the mesh, which is what we would expect. But what I'm going to do is set it up so that we get that motion, but there's no deformation to, uh, to the actual geometry. Um, and to do that, we're going to use dynamics. So I'm going to move over to perspective and I'm going to take this object right here, the, the low res boxes, let's put it back at the beginning and I'm going to run dynamics on them. Not that we're going to do anything other than we're just baking the motion. So with that object selected, properties, dynamics, we'll go to add dynamics and we'll choose cloth open up the settings and we'll run all the way over to the file tab. We're going to scan the motion. Uh, a lot of people aren't uh, aware of this, but this scan motion is actually the replacement for MD scan. Uh, and it does the exact same thing. It's just going to scan the geometry. So we're not really taking advantage of any of the cloth dynamic settings. We're just using this to, to, to scan the file. So scan motion. And then we just need to uh, give it a, well, Carts low res, that's a good name. We don't have anything in there, but just in case we do it again, 001, just so we can have a, um, a version number on there. And it creates an MDD file, and that's basically a file that has the information of where every point is for every frame on the object. Save that out. It automatically loads it here. So this is like scan motion is like MD scan, and load motion is like MD plug. Okay, now with that set up, we can um, move over to our high-res cars. So that would be layer two. Our high-res cars here. M for motions. And I'm going to parent it to the low-res cards. Okay. And I want it to pick up the motion from here. So P for properties. Come over to the deform tab. Under add displacement, we'll choose effects hard link. And it already snaps to the cars, to the carts, the low res ones, and we can see that it's moving. But we don't need to um, to use the low res cars. So I'm going to go over to at this point. So I'm going to go over to Scene Editor, Open, and for the low res cars, uh, I'm going to choose, uh, which is right here, low res cars. I'm just going to hide them. We don't need to see them. We still need them in the scene because it's what's driving the, the high-res cars. But if I push play now, we'll see that the cars are deforming to the path, but they're not actually deforming. They're, 
there because of hard link it's not going to allow the geometry to deform but it is separating the cars so that we get the cars following the tracks okay so we'll go back to the perspective view and this is a, a really quick setup for doing cars. You could build the track however you want. You could do loops and things like that. And I'll show a few examples of doing more of a roller coaster uh, with this technique. But uh, there you go. The cars are following on the tracks. If you wanted to have each, let me pause it. Say you wanted to have each um, of these uh, different uh, trucks here with the wheels separate from each other like they are in some uh, train cars you could build a box for each one of these and have it uh, move independent and you might need to do that on on more of a roller coaster setup but there's a lot of train cars that are set up just like this where they're not independent the front and the back uh, set of wheels is not independent okay so there you go that would work for a train separating the cars and having them animate along a path so here's a scene that's set up more like uh, the newer roller coasters where um, the tracks can twist and turn and, and do loops. I'm going to go ahead and push play and we'll just use the red ball because uh, it shows up uh, pretty clear. We'll use that as our, um, our cart. But using this, a, a similar setup where we're um, using hard link to have the, have the cart go around the tracks um, using the morph trick. Uh, we can have some pretty complex looking motions going on uh, fairly easy. I'm going to show one more example. Let me go ahead and pause this and we'll load up another scene. Here's one last example of doing a roller coaster uh, using this technique and uh, we've got the ball going not only around in a circle but it's also twirling around as it travels around the tracks. So it's doing a, a twist here. So uh, hopefully this will give you some ideas of whether you need to set up a roller coaster or um, if you need to animate uh, a train with multiple cars going down a track with a curve.